Hello, my peeps. Welcome to Show and Tell with Tracy. It is, uh, let's see, 6.04. If I thought that I could come skidding in on my chair and come to like a screeching halt and say, hey, I would do that. Because that is the perfect sort of start <laughs> to, to, to where I'm at right now as I start this live. Um, but something tells me I'd overshoot, I'd be in the wall, things would be falling, it would just, it would. And quite frankly, today's word of the day, I do love some British words. Uh, one of my favorites, knackered. I am completely knackered today. And you will notice that the face cam is not on. That is because I also look completely knackered today. Oh, um, to recap my day, I drive a 30 year old vehicle that has no air conditioning. Uh, as my dad likes to say, I have 260 air conditioning. Two windows open going 60 miles an hour. Unfortunately, I was mostly going like 10 or 15 miles an hour and mostly stopped. <laughs> so that didn't really help me. Um, I went to physio for the first time in two years. Um, and I know it's going to feel better eventually. Right now it just hurts. I went furniture shopping, found like two of the most perfect chairs that like almost instantly upon walking in, which is good because I can tell you, I've put off furniture shopping for two years. Uh, I hate it. I absolutely hate it. Um, just have don't have good experience with it. Hate doing it. <laughs> um, found great chairs. Unfortunately, I don't like the couch that goes with them because otherwise that couch would be half price. Wouldn't that be a deal? But I did find a different couch. And the funny part of furniture shopping when you're stepping up demonstrator is the chairs are a lovely white with um, some soft succulent, some misty moonlight, and some smoky slate in them, and a lovely leaf pattern. Um, the original <laughs> couch that was kind of with them was soft sea foam. And depending on what's sitting next to the chairs, makes them kind of read more green or more blue or more gray. So I found a different couch that was sort of a, eh, somewhere between a smoky slate and a basic gray <laughs> um, that I like that's less curly, frilly, tuck, uh, tucker, it's not the word, tufted um, than the coat that came with the set. And it looks like they're all made in Calgary. They're made in Canada. And uh, maybe only a week or two to wait. So huzzah. But yeah, that was exhausting. Even because I walked through the entire store just to make sure, even though I did see these right as I walked in. And then I had to get the pillow off the couch and walk around the second time to find a couch color that I liked and a style that I liked. <laughs> so there's that. And then I need my fence for the garden. So um, the dog puts, you know, <laughs> pruning and gardening and helping himself to the, to the garden. Well, could I find the fence and the fence posts at the same place? No, I checked like five different places. I can get fence posts in one, fence in another. So I got the fence today, fence posts are tomorrow. Uh, then I needed groceries. Can I get everything I need in one place? No, two different grocery orders to pick up. I got home, I don't know, 5.30, I think. I'm sitting on the couch, quarter to six. I'm thinking, okay, I gotta go get some supper and I gotta get ready. And then in that like split second, I realized, my live is not at seven, like on Thursday. My live is at six. So, wing into the office I go. So this is why I'm amusing myself because if I could, like I said, I would come screaming in here on a chair, skid to a halt and go, let's go. Uh, as it is, I'm just gonna sort of try to make sense. Um, see if I can see if I can swing that and see how long we get before. Um, the giggle set in and, and I fi start finding everything hysterically funny. Okay, so I'm cutting this uh, first piece of paper while I talk. Um, for a while there, I was just sitting there doing nothing, but I really should be doing something. So I'm gonna cut this. Uh, what is this? Okay, let's try that again. <laughs> that is eight and a half, I want eight and a half. This is the one I want to cut. Okay, first off, we're going to make sure we cut the right size. Right side. So I will tell you that I saw this cool grad card on the demonstrator page. And it's great. The demonstrators share everything. It's awesome. It's, it's quite the resource. So I saw this great card on there. And I thought, ooh, I'm going to make one of those. So I Googled 
gatefold cards. And these still are cool cards, but so this is basically a gatefold card. And isn't this kind of a cool card? <laughs> um, I have it a little bit too bright in here. I don't know if you can tell this is, this is a uh, pumpkin pie with bright and navy. So, and this card stands up, not when you have a rough surface there, it stands up. So what you actually see from the front when you look at it is this. Um, and, and to be clear, there is no hidden message, go Oilers go, in the cards that I'm showing you right now, um, go Oilers go. It just happens that the high school in Mournville, this is their colors, <laughs> navy, orange, and white. Spoilers book. So this is a card. And this, this is like just an add-on. This is basically a gatefold card, right? So normally it would be bigger, but we had to accommodate the hat or mortar board as it's called. So this is a gatefold that just goes like this. And I thought, well, this is cute. And I found this while I was looking. This is not the original card, but I do quite like it. And this one came from Stamping Bunny, whose name is, I want to say Rhonda Griffin, I think is her name. Anyway, she had this nice thing and, and she had done one that was like just yellow and white. And I'm thinking those are odd school colors, but I, I'm assuming she would have picked those colors for a reason. Um, and then she made another one that was maroon and gray, I think, which is one of the high schools in St. Albert, Belrose Bulldogs. I know because I Googled them all so that I could make uh, grad stuff that matched all the surrounding high schools <laughs> and, the, and the University of Alberta and Grant McEwen and Nate, just for the farmer's market. So I knew what all the colors were. So this is one of them and this happens to be the gatefold. So I'm gonna show you how to make this card because um, it's cute. But that wasn't the card I saw that I wanted. Turns out what I'm looking for is a Dutch door fold. <laughs> so again, go, let's go. These happen to be the colors for Mournville Composite High School. Oh, I should also point out, I just ran out of time. Because I was working on these this morning, and then, as I said, I had quite the day lined up, um, and I'm using a bunch of retired stuff. Because honestly, I have a bunch of retired stuff for grads that I really, really like, and uh, can't get rid of. And so I keep using it. So I, my plan is, I just uh, because there's only one two, and in a year like 2022, I got to run the two through three times. <laughs> so this will say two zero two two up here when I'm finished in Navy. And I actually think, or no, I think I'm going to do this one a pumpkin pie. And I think on this one, I might actually put, just to give you an idea, a two zero and then the two two down here in navy on this card. I just, I ran out of time. So when you see the final pictures, you will see that they have numbers on them. Um, these things are retired. Retired or retiring? I think they're retired. Um, they are just the best size, and I will never part with those. <laughs> Anyways, so here's the, here's the card I actually saw. <laughs> um, and it turns out, I, I finally, it took me a little bit of looking, but I finally found the woman whose card I saw. And I thought, oh, perfect. I can just see how she made it. Because I, I had a pretty good idea from the picture. She's doing a live showing how she made it next week. <laughs> so she didn't actually have a tutorial. So I thought, fine. So I just found a different Dutch fold card figured out how to make a Dutch fold card in general, and then made this one. And so it turns out I didn't know how to make it. Uh, like I said, these are two different stamp sets, but I love these stamp sets. The other thing you'll notice, the first card had a, a twine tassel on it. This one, I just hand cut a tassel, and this is just a hole punch. And it happens to be the same size as a glue dot. It's one of these hole punches too, like just an office punch that I've had for years. Um, I would say, the eighth of an inch, maybe a little bigger. Uh, and then I just sort of freehanded. I cut a triangle to stick underneath it. And then I just made the edge rough. And so this one, I, I really like the way that looks. Anyways, this one opens like this. So you know how you have Dutch doors in old farmhouses? That's why they're called Dutch doors. And it's a little harder to show, but it sits like this. So if I can hold it. When you have it on your desk, it sits like this, right? With the Dutch doors open and the hat just kind of rests in it. So I thought, well, isn't that the coolest? So this is the one that I originally set out to make. Now, and the one I saw was chickens, right? So there, it doesn't have to be a grad card. Like I've seen lots of Dutch door. I just didn't realize that that's what I was calling them. Um, and you have to be a little careful because I keep 
I keep mushing on the top, like when I put the hat down and I keep bending these two corners. Um, but anyways, yeah, so go on, let's go. Uh, for those of you not from Alberta or not familiar, uh, what is the thing I guess what I'm doing here? <laughs> um, hockey, Battle of Alberta, about to commence. I'm not actually a hockey fan, but I am an Edmonton fan. Um, so yes, Calgary and Edmonton are about to play. Now I'm almost going to tease you when I show you that I'm going to make another card, put a little bit of red in it, but I will not now nor ever make a flames card. So that is not what I'm working on. Um, I have nothing against the city of Calgary in general. I like lots of people from Calgary. Um, I just somehow there's, you know, being born in Edmonton, I just, there's something in me that, you know, makes me good naturely tease Calgary. And I mean, we have to be nice to Calgary because they're going to lose and be out of the playoffs, right? And Edmonton's going to keep going. So we have to be nice to them. Um, I'm looking at my sheet. I'm trying to like stall for time here because I have totally lost my place on my measurements. Oh, there we go. So. Yeah, totally. I probably, probably should have postponed tonight because I'm so, what was the word? Knackered that um, I don't think I'm making any sense. This is the flap. Okay, you know, this will this will make more sense. I'm going to show you. Um, I'm going to show you how to how to do this card to begin with. So I've cut a little square. That is two and three quarters. If I did it right, nope, I cut it three. It's supposed to be two and three quarters by two and three quarters. Actually, I find with I do like my trimmer. I find I have better control if I'm cutting small things. If I use my little guillotine. Two and three quarters. Two and three quarters. Now on the on the original one that it was actually Don Griffith is the one who made the rooster one. Rooster, chicken. What did I say earlier? Um, she actually made two squares. And so she had one behind and one on top. I can't put this behind because it's glued down. So she actually had two. So if you were making this and it wasn't a grad hat, you could cut two of these squares, right? So like this, this would normally be an orange one. So if you cut like an orange square to go behind and then a blue one on top, it just gives you a little bit fancier front to your card. But in this case, because I'm just making a mortar board, I just need one. So two and three quarter square for that. And then this piece of cardstock is seven and an eight by eight. Now I will um, on my blog this week and put all these measurements because there's all these like for both the one card's not too bad, but for this card, there's a lot of layers. There's just a lot of different layers and dimensions. Um, and I was going to cut them all, but then now I realize that <laughs> that may just be too taxing for me. So I'm basically going to show you how to cut the bases and then I'll show you the other card and then you'll get to see the final ones. Um, and the reason, actually, I, could, I need to, I do need to cut out the bases, or you're not going to be able to see the distinction between them. The reason I'm doing black, red, and white for this one is because that's the colors for Sturgeon Comp, which is the other high school that kids in town go to, and likely the one that my son will eventually go to. Okay, so this this paper is eight by seven and then eight, so you have to make sure you're using the right side when you do it. Yeah, see, I knew I was doing something wrong before, and because I was talking at the same time, it wasn't making any sense to me. I'm thinking this this looks way too big because I didn't. I, this right now is currently eight and a half. Okay, so I just need to trim off half an inch because I wasn't uh, I wasn't paying attention when I cut the first time. Shocking! I know I was not paying attention. That will go out. That'll work great for something else. I saved I saved all, so many scraps. <laughs> They eventually get used. Okay, there we go. So make sure you're on the eight inch side. And we are going to score two. Make sure our cardstock is straight. And at six, which lucky for me, just happens to fit without me having to make that go any bigger. Okay, now we're going to take our cardstock and we're going to turn it. We're just going to turn it 90 degrees. And then we are going to score a two and three eighths. So four eighths would be a half. So two and three eighths is one section back. I'm going to do that. So 
one, we go the whole way across. It doesn't matter. This one, I want to do the same thing. I want to score at two and three eighths. Just making it lined up here first, two and three eighths. But I only want to go from this score line out and from this score line out. And you know what, in hindsight, the reason we're doing that is so you can cut it afterwards. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna get fancy. And I'm just gonna cut it instead of scoring it. Because I'm just gonna cut it anyways. So I do love Stampin' Up's trimmer. So you can either score and then cut or be brave like me and, you know, I'm live. I, I always wanna say live TV. On live TV, just uh, cut it. And if you're not sure, because of the angle I'm at, I have no idea if that's even close to where it's supposed to be. But, um, well, jackrabbit, look at that. I was going to say, make sure if, if you're not sure, cheat short so you don't end up going over. So this one is perfect. This one I went a little bit, even though I thought I was cheating short. Um, I went a little bit over, but it's not going to matter. But you kind of want to keep it that way. So the reason we're doing this is this flap. Um, I thought I quit using black cardstock, man. Um, so this flap here, oh, I can't believe you can see it, is the part that's going to fold down. Is this part that's going to fold down, right? These two are the gates on the door. So this and this can come off. So again, we'll just take our little, little dude here. Uh, so on the Stampin' Up! one, if I, was, if I wasn't looking at this on TV, um, you can actually just read the measurements down the side, but thanks to the lights I have on, I can't. So I'm going to do, I'm just going to do this. I'm just going to put my finger there and stop and I'll fix the rest with scissors. But this will give me, it will give me more of a clean cut than if I didn't at least try that. So I'm just going to do the same thing here. Just use my thumb as a stop. That wasn't too bad. Yeah. Push this off to the side. We'll get out our trusty little snips. So I came pretty close. Um, we'll just give that a little snip to finish it off. See, and, and those little bits and pieces that I'm cutting off, like it has score lines in it, but that's fine because I will likely cut my numbers out of here. And depending, depending how it works, red doesn't always work for everything. I find. So depending how it works, the other, both cards might have block numbers on them. Okay, so here's our card now. There we go, there's my bone folder. So this is our card, this is our finished product. So we can get them both in screen. So this is, oh, here. Let's pretend the hat's there, <laughs> right? So this is, this is where we ended up. So we're gonna fold our doors in. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna fold the first one and you're gonna burnish it. Then when you go to fold the other one, before you put too much pressure here or burnish on this end, match up the, the door parts, like the part where it touches, match those up, get your bottom straight, hold that nice and, so you, cause then you have a nice clean finish on the front of your card and then score. You can always touch up if you need to, like if this isn't quite, these aren't too bad though, um, but you wanna, you wanna have a nice like clean closure at the front and then we're just going to score this one down. And it kind of overhangs a little bit, but that's fine. So the reason I said I, have, I, do, need to, um, I do need to cut some layers is because I got to put layers underneath that other piece. So the flap. And yes, I have a full suit of cards off and the tiny little guillotine, but don't worry, it's still going to work uh, as soon as I figure out what I'm doing. Two and an eight by three and three quarters. See, so it does cut the whole way, but the piece I need cut, <clears throat> it's going to cut enough. And the rest is basically going to be scrapper layers. So if you cut it one way, and then you line it up and you cut it the other way, you get a nice clean edge, and it works just fine. Where there's a will, there's a way. Tracy does not like to put big tools on her desk, because that means she has to keep her desk clean. Oh, what did I say? Two and an eighth. Three and three and three quarters. There we go. Now, if I read the right section, this will fit up there. Now, um, you have the choice, and I'm going to put the measurements down just as they are. This one is is the the wider 
um, border. This is kind of a mix, and I'm okay with that. So I'll show you on the finished one. So this is the wider border. So this is the one eighth inch border on the edge, but then the border between here and here is the one sixteenth. So I'm kind of using both. I tend to use um, the one sixteenth one way more. I like the narrower border, but on this card, I wanted to, I need to be able to see a little bit more of the blue because the school has two colors. Uh, okay, so I have that. And then I had scraps of paper. Do any of these happen to fit? These are from earlier from doing other things. Oh, this one is the right plus size. Okay, uh, what did I say? So this needs to be two, which it just happens to be, by three and five eighths. So that is an eighth over half. Okay. Double check my, so you see this is a little bit thinner. So that's good. Okay. Do, do, seal. So I'm just going to put these. Um, there's lots of tricks for this seal. The seal, if you don't end it properly, sometimes because it's such a good strong adhesive, it kind of snaps back. So I usually put my silicone mat down, but I didn't this time. Um, but the lovely Shauna from Moose Jaw, uh, she's the one who said you can run it on your on your skin too, and it will catch. So anytime I can't do it, if I haven't put my mat down, I just kind of run it on my finger, and it always pulls it forward like I need it to. There you go. That's why you tune in for these life-saving tips. <laughs> okay. So we're going to layer this one up like we should. We're going to try not to rush so we can actually make the thing straight. Okay, wouldn't that be nicer? Uh, that's the only thing with the, the thinner border is it is less forgiving on, on lining it up than, um, than the little bit thicker one. The little bit thicker when you have a little bit more room to play. So you can sort of split the difference and shimmy things and but on the skinny border, yeah, you don't have as much play. I got that stuck to my finger. Okay, so this is what we're going to do. Now, if you were going to stamp, stamp it before you hear it, obviously. Um, if you're going to emboss, emboss before you stick it down. Um, because I'm just going to, oh, here we go. Because I'm just going to put some numbers up here. Um, it's okay to do it afterwards because I'm just, and I will tell you, so not only am I going to put numbers, this is as far as I got on the numbers. Here's the two scraps, the um, adhesive sheet that goes behind so that you basically just turn the sticker or the, the die cuts into stickers. Oh my God, that's one of the best things ever invented. Um, for detailed dies, little dies, layering things. Oh, it is the way to go. Okay, so now imagine that I took these. Oh, you know what? That might actually be the right size. So if you imagine that I've taken these, because I'm going to save us some time here and, you know, made all my layers, right? So I'm going to put all those on first. Then when it comes time to put the hat on, you're going to line the hat up on this flap. So let's do this so you can see better since I have so much black going on there. Now, it doesn't, it doesn't quite go to the corner. I thought I might be able to, like, nudge it up a bit and line it up on this and this, but the points go past the edge of this red, right? So what you're doing is you're basically just kind of lining up the point here and they, they're just in, they're in maybe a 16th on either edge is where they're going to go. So when you're sticking this down, you only want adhesive on this half. Otherwise, you're going to glue your card shut. So because I have more control and because I like it, let's go with the tear and tape. So I'm just going to scooch up and I'm going to go just a bit higher than half before I put my tape down. Right, so that this half line is what's going to go on. And then I'm just going to that a little bit rough. There we go. I love the tear and tape tear so easily. God, I, I know I told stories before about that nightmare sticky strip. It, I mean, it was great adhesive, but it was just not user friendly. <laughs> okay, a little piece that stuck to me. Um, I, said, I don't have nails. I'm not sure why I think I can pick that up without them. So if you happen to go over, that's fine. Just kind of scooch it back onto the card. So now I have my adhesive here. So I'm going to tell you that I don't know if it will be as easy to see on the, on the screen because there's black behind it. But start this way, right? Because I have no adhesive on this half. So if you start this way to kind of get your thing centered and figure out where you're going to go. And then just kind of roll it forward, keeping your spacing. There we go. Now I've got it centered there. 
Now, where'd my card go? I keep losing things. Like I said, this was easy. Um, you know how I said, here's a block strip. Okay, that's not gonna work. You're not gonna be able to see a block strip. Um, so this is what I did for that other tassel. I'll show you the other one again. So here's my, here's my little white dot that I popped out. And here is, and, and I just happened to hit the, that little piece there, but it really had nothing to do with that. It just happened to be how far I went. And I just cut myself a little triangle. And then if you think, when I did it the first time, I was going like this, and I was just kind of wiggling the scissors, and it felt so extreme. And then when I looked at it, yeah, you can barely see a difference. So make big mountains and like take big notches out. And it does not matter if it's even, because you'll tell by looking at an actual tassel that they don't line up even. Maybe if it's manufactured and fancy, but when you tie your own, there's no way the bottom's even. So there we go, lots of little bits and pieces. And then I took my glue dot, which like I said, that happens to be this hole punch that I happen to have, just happens to be the exact same size as a glue dot. <laughs> so I put the hole punch, the punched out hole, I guess not the hole punch, on the glue dot. I picked it up, which I don't know if this much trouble picking it up before. There we go. I picked it up. I put the I put it at a jaunty angle. I made this too long, so just making sure that I can just trim off a little bit without, uh, which I can, without making it wider than the blue dot. Okay, we're gonna go. I I I know there's something to do with when you graduate. The tassel goes one way before you graduate and then when you're once you're done you like move it to the other side i have no idea and i have a zero recollection of doing that at my own grad i don't even think we had the hats and mortar boards but and i don't remember a grad picture like that but I, I could be wrong but that was a very long time ago that was 38 years ago i have no idea so there we go i'm using the glue dot that i have on the the circle on my little punched out hole and I'm just tucking it in. So I've got probably half of this tassel underneath that glue dot, holding it on. And there's my, there's my tassel. And then, like I said, you're just going to finish your layers, which I'm not going <laughs> to make you painfully watch. So this was our Dutch door fold card. And like I said, it sits like this on your desk. See, now I can actually do it without holding it open. It's very cute. And all I did was put a couple little things on there. You could, if you were not making a grad card, these could be DSP panels. This could be embossed. Um, the rooster one was very cute. So she made, she put this one behind. Uh, do I have a white square? No, I don't. That would be too easy. Here, let's pretend this is the right side. And then, so she put the, the white square this way and she had stamped the rooster and some grass and stuff on here. So she stamped grass on these ones too. Am I seeing things or is there a layer of red between the black and white? Yes, Nikki, hello, nice to see you. Uh, yes, I'm showing you grad cards. Um, what did I do with it? There we go. So go Oilers, go. This is the uh, Mournville Community High School colors. So yeah, this is this card is um, Knight of Navy with some pumpkin pie in between. And just in the interest of my knackered day that I had, I, I only sort of half did the other card. But yes, all of these are layered up on all the different levels and I will have all those measurements. And then this card, the one I was just making, uh, there is a layer of real red, kind of hard to see. The black is brutal on, on camera um, behind the black. And this happens to be the colors for Sturgeon Comp, which are the Sturgeon Comp is the spirits. Mournville Comp or Mournville Community is um, the wolves. Turns out I don't have a wolf stamp. And the spirits, I was like, hmm, not sure how I'm going to make that go. Uh, so yeah, I was just going with colors and numbers. But like I said, this will be, actually this one I probably would make red numbers. So I put the 2022 up here and then I'll finish the panels. Like I said, I'm not gonna, not gonna make you watch me cut layers. So then on this card, which is the gatefold card. Um, no, you know, it, it's funny, Nikki, because on camera, um, and I do it when I watch Tamara all the time and she'll say something about, I'm just gonna grab some, I'm trying to think what color she used the last time. Um, she grabbed a blue thing and I, I would have swore it was purple or the other way around. Like it was just, 
they just don't translate as much and I have much better lighting now and I'm doing everything the way I'm supposed to and some things just they're just hard to see um so yes this one is pumpkin pie and night of navy which is more in both community high so this one I'm also going to make this version in the uh sturgeon comp colors so and see and this is where I screwed myself up before because this one I do want to keep at eight and a half so I'm using this uh okay so this says nine which means I cut a two inch strip off it um eight and a half that's the original eight and a half okay so I'm keeping the original eight and a half and I'm cutting it at three and seven eighths. Now, the reason I'm cutting it at three and seven eighths, <clears throat> and whichever lovely, keep the factory edge whenever possible, um, whichever lovely lady, Rhonda, I want to, yeah, like I said, Stamping Bunny was her name, but I think, I think her name was Rhonda. Um, she, she made hers four and a quarter, which is what I made to begin with. And then it didn't work. Uh, and I think the reason it didn't work is because she made a white square, or that's not a square, a white triangle here, and then just had the hat covering it. But I wanted two colors there. I didn't want just white. Like I said, hers was yellow and white. It was a crazy looking color scheme for a school, but um, I wanted to add this strip. So I ended up making my card longer. So the original four and a quarter, which you'll notice if you look at this card closely, you'll notice that it's got this nice spacing all around it, except for the bottom. <laughs> Because the bottom, once I realized that when I put the hat on, it wouldn't fit in an envelope, I just chopped the bottom off. So <laughs> this one, I'm going to make the dimensions right, and I'm going to make this a little bit smaller. Um, but I wanted to be able to do this. And I, and I kind of like the reveal. I kind of like it looking like orange on orange. And you can just see like a couple little things, which I guess you could cut off if you wanted to. But I thought, oh, it's OK. So that when you open it up, you get the better reveal. Right, so by scooching it up this quarter inch, I had to make it a little bit smaller. So you probably could do four, but so you're not bending the tip of the hat or anything like that. I just went with three and seven eighths. And then I need my three by three square. See, the, the measurements for these two cards are close enough together that they have been screwing me up the whole day, mixing and matching which one's which. Okay, so this one is the one I need the three by three square, not the other one. And I also need a three by three white square. Yes. So then I also need a three by three white square, which is this one, which I'm still using the other half. So I take the three by three square and then I cut it in half diagonally. And that's where I get the collar of the gown. But I have this left over from when I made the orange one. So imagine that I started with a white square and just cut it in half diagonally. Okay, so those are my main pieces. And then there we go. I'm like, what did I do with that black strip? And then, because you know how fancy I am, I was just winging it on making the extra little piece of color on the collar. But what turned out to work is a quarter inch. Small. Uh, <laughs> quarter inch is too small to do on here because uh, I can't get my, my big meaty fingers out. So I don't know if this is like 100% accurate, but it sure looks like it to me. There's a hole here. And this is where the guard was. There's one at the bottom end too. But I, being the rebel that I am, took the guard off like the instant I got this because I found the guard to be in my way. Um, safety first. So here, I'll move it over there so you can see. So this little hole right beside it, if you, if you look at it, it looks to be about a quarter inch. Now, if you're at all crooked, it's, it's not going to be, but that little thing tends to be the quarter inch mark that I use. So it might be like, you know, a half a millimeter one way or the other, but for what I'm doing, that is more than close enough. So when you look at this and you think, wow, she's freehanding, she is not freehanding. She's using the mark on the thing. And yes, look how close my fingers are. <laughs> but that's, that's how I roll. Um, so I'm going to cut two strips and I'm leaving them they're long enough so that I could hit both ends of the mark I have used much bigger much more dangerous tools than this um, so it will be funny if this is the thing where I actually cut myself on. okay so then I have these two strips that go to make the collar 
Now, the reason I left this out is because we need to uh, score this. So if you took a normal card base, I might I go to grab when I grab the wrong, wrong orientation. So if you were to go grab a normal card base, this would be eight and a half by five and a half. And you would score it at four and a quarter to fold your eight and a half side, right? So we've got the same eight and a half. We just made it considerably shorter. So instead of folding it in the middle, we're going to fold it two, two and one eighth and two and one eighth so that we get our gates. Now, <clears throat> you want to make just make sure which like both when you do it, if you're scoring like to the line, inside the line, the line is covered, you know how that the age old thing of how do you score the right dimension? Make sure you do it the same way on both because you want to match this up and have a nice clean front on this one too. So I'm going to go two and an eighth on this. I'll put my card over. I'm going to do another two and an eighth. Oh, I did skip one piece. There it is. Um, and then I totally forgot. You, you need one little piece that you're not actually going to see. Um, and when she, when I was watching the video, I have no idea what she said. Um, like I, I totally missed it when she said how big of a piece. So I just decided that it was going to be one and a half by three. It was just the end of, it was just the end of <laughs> the piece that I had already cast, and I just scored it in half. So that, or I just realized I was off. So it's three by one and a half, and really just use a piece of scrap because you don't see it. Um, I used red, like I wouldn't use a completely different scrap, but just make it something like this size off a piece that you have. Um, because what you need is you need a piece right here to put behind the hat, down behind the, the Duma flicky um, so that you can, uh, you can attach the hat. Now, because I did this after the fact, I'm going to adjust my piece of white. I need a piece of white as well. What did I do with my white card stock that I could have swore I just had? <laughs> That's how things work here. I could have swore I just had a piece of white card stock. So this is not going to end up being a standard card base. I forgot my first measurement already. It should be four or four and one eighth. <laughs> Find out. Four, <laughs> not four and one eighth. I I told you I cut the bottom off, but I forgot to uh, write down what the new what the new dimension was. Okay, so there's our piece that I have somehow cut crooked. What did I do there? Sixteenth off this. Uh, I have no idea what I did on that one. I, I'm just gonna trim that up, and then I'm gonna see what the heck was I doing there. Made that look so wonky. Okay. Okay, so what we end up with now, and we're going to do the same thing we did on the gate fold or the Dutch door fold. So I'm going to take one of these and I'm going to make sure it's lined up nice and neat on the bottom. And I'm going to burnish it down. Then I'm going to rotate that around just because it's easier to see. So before I put too much pressure on here, I'm going to line up this part. So I get a nice, even, straight close without a big gap in the middle. I'm going to hold that down, and then I'm going to burnish. And then I've got my nice, my nice fold. And I mean, a gap's not the end of the world. Let's face it. Much bigger issues in the world. But if you have a gap, you tend to see this like little, like this, right? And, and it just looks better like this. So that's what we're doing. Now with the... Oops, I forgot to cut this twice. So with this one, I did this the last time too. This is what's going to go here, right? So we've taken our three inch square, we've cut it in half diagonally, and now we're going to cut it this way. So this is what I find because there's no, I mean, you could, I guess you could measure out, but I'm not actually sure what the diagonal distance of a three inch. Oh, hey, Jen. So what I find though is as long as you have your straight edge up against something, 
all you have to do is line up the point and you're still going to get the pieces you want right so i have no idea what the middle of that square is uh, i'm sure pythagorean would tell me something but i got the point lined up that's important now <laughs> as odd as this may sound keep the orientation of these pieces because when i was doing it earlier i did not i wasn't really paying attention i cut them in half and i kind of threw them off to the side and then I kept flipping them over and over thinking, which, okay, which way is up? Which way goes where? So, and, and I did it once I flipped them over to put adhesive on too. So, so these are going to go here. And I just trimmed off the corner when I was done, because for no matter what I did, I ended up with one point that was longer than the other. So this is going to go here when we put it on. And then for the, the strip of color that I wanted, I just butted it up against. And I just made sure the strip was longer and I just put adhesive here so that it would stick the strip down and then I just trimmed it. So when I tried to do it earlier, so again, I'm gonna keep it this way. Um, take that out of the middle, we're not, we're not quite ready for that yet. When I did it earlier, I, I put adhesive on the triangle and then I put adhesive on this. Well, this is a quarter inch. So adhesive on this is not the easiest. So what I figured I would try this time and seriously, you know what? The silicone mats out the whole time. Hey, maybe I should use it. What I'm going to do this time is I am going to look at where I want the adhesive, which is about here. And then I'm just going to use my little adhesive car sock, which I'm just using it to get a line, basically. So I can hold my finger out of the way. I'm going to put adhesive on like this. Now I have an adhesive race here, so if I've gone too far. That's what's gonna. That's what's gonna help me. But I did it again. I picked this up because they're not. The the thing is, I don't know if you guys noticed that they're not exactly the same, right? Like this one. This one is the same length this way. But if you grab it this way, it is just a little bit shorter. They're not the same. So this is where I was like, flip, 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 trying to make sure I got the right direction. Okay. So this is the one that's gonna go here. And it's going to butt up right against the corner. Oh, see, I, I went at the wrong angle, but I, I had the right idea on space. So we're going to put the white on first. And this could be whatever color. Like if you're, like I said, the bulldog's in, um, I know because of Googling, although my one nephew did go to Belrose in St. Albert. Um, and his grad, how old is he? He is 26. So his grad would, would have been eight years ago. Um, I can't say I remember the colors, so I had to Google. But yeah, there's is there's is black, dark red, like cherry cobbler red, and uh, I think it's the smoky slate kind of gray. Um, so you, I mean, you could have made this part smoky slate, and this part black with the cobbler here. So you see, I, I did have the right idea. I don't know if you can see, and if I would have gone at a better angle. You wouldn't see that I kind of went off, skewed off to the side, but that's okay because um, I wish Stampin' Up! still sold these erasers because I recommend them to everybody. Um, that was quite a bit of adhesive I, I went off to the side with. These are awesome. Um, I stocked up when they when they showed that they were going out of stock or that they were going to stop selling them. I, I stocked up and I have like three of them. This, this one I've had for 10 years though. And other than every now and again, I cut the quarter off of it. If it starts to get a little ratty, <laughs> this, this one is going to last me forever. So not sure why I need it more, but, but I have them. So then I just flip this over and I use my snips and I cut off a little bit of the white that I wasn't supposed to. And then I flip it this way and I cut off this piece. And there's my, there's my very unscientific I got a stripe on my, um, had mine 25 years and it still works great, right? And you know what, Jen, part of my thought was, well, this is rubber, it's gonna get hard, it's gonna, nope. Because <laughs> the thing is, it doesn't, I don't even put it in anything. Half the time, it's just sitting out on my desk. Um, okay, so now, in theory, I should do a better job of putting adhesive on this one because I have one done now. Um, and so I should be able to see that the adhesive is kind of going like this. So let's see if I do a better job. Again, may maybe in the long run, it would have just been easier to put adhesive on the back of the things because this was not the best way to do it. But I thought I would try it. Just because like I said, these little pieces are so little. 
and I know you're shocked that I'm not using a tear and tape for this. <laughs> okay. Um, and I do find when you're trying to put like the color, the cardstock's the same color on both ends. Uh, it, it's really hard to see. So I am going to go like this. Try not to stick my head there. Okay, see, and I did even worse on this one. Because on this one, I did good down here, but here I don't have any adhesive. So I need to put a little bit there. So it is a bit wider, like I said, it's a little bit wider. But if you do this, it just kind of mush it around a little bit and kind of squish it back in under on itself. You'll get adhesive where you need it. I'm just doing that so I make sure I get it in the spot that I missed. And then again, I'm just going to make sure this goes past on either one, button them up. I was going to put it over top, but I figured it would be harder to get it even, and it was easier just to butt it up the same way I just, yeah. Well, and that's what I did the first time, Nick. I don't know why I didn't just do it the second time. Um, oh, I made that one just a, a tiny, tiny bit too short. Kind of smudge it over. I think I'll ruin it if I, if I don't, though. This will this will be the one that I, I do not give to anyone. This will be the one that I keep in my um, in my stash so that the next time I try to figure out how to make a Dutch door card, <laughs> I have a sample. So that's that's this is what I will keep. But you know what? This is the problem. See, I I went a little shy, and so there's a big little notch. Um, the cheater's way to fix that is actually a black sharpie. Um, but for now, we're just going to leave it like this because the idea is just to show you how to make the card. Okay, so now we have our shirt. We have our hat that is going to go down like this over top of it. And now we need to fix the hat to the back of the card. So that's what this piece is for. And like I said, I made mine three by an inch and a half just because the chunk that I had left over from cutting the hat off was three. I figured an inch and a half seemed like a good amount. The other thing... <laughs> That you have to remember is you have to put this down before you put this. So if you're going to stamp something on here, I'm a rebel. I'll just stamp it afterwards. Oh, barely the piece of white cardstock I grabbed was not uh, was not completely blank. Um, so we're going to put this down, and then we're going to put the hat over top. Make sure that the score line here. Like when you're sizing this up to put it down, kind of rough fit it, but make sure you inch this up enough that the score line is basically just off the card sock. Because the part you have to remember is when you fold the card shut, this has to fold over top. When I made it the first time, I lined them up and then I couldn't get this to bend. So scooch it up so that the score line is like this, right? So the score line is just off the card so that it will bend back down here. Now, this one I am going to use my tear and tape because the parts that move the most are the ones you want to make sure don't fall off. So we're going to use the strong adhesive tear and tape. So whether I, I don't know if there's a right and a wrong, which one to do first. Um, but I'm going to do it this way just because uh, if I if I screw. <laughs> If I screw it up at all, I can always adjust it on the back side. Okay, so like I said, this I like it. I guess this is your choice. You could you could scooch this up. I like it. Here, I'll put this down for a second. I like this to completely cover, so that when you open it up, you get ooh reveal of the of the neckline, right? Otherwise, you just sort of see the orange. You you see all the colors. Oops, sorry, <laughs> you see all the colors here. You just I like the reveal. If you wanted to scooch yours up. Um, a little bit, just like I said, make sure you can still fit it in the envelope afterwards. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Actually, when I did this earlier, I didn't have that in there. Um, I have it stuck to my finger. There we go. So I'm putting this in the middle. Oh, wait a minute. Sorry. This is what I did this morning, too. You think I'd be smarter than this? Okay. <laughs> I, and I took the I took the, the strips off, so I keep sticking that to my hand. If you want to make yourself a tassel like this. Or you just free cut it. <laughs> um, this is a really bad example to show the black when you if I, when I don't have all the layers done. Let's go back here. If you want to make a, just a tassel like this, it doesn't matter because you're just sticking it over top with a glue dot. But if you want to do like this, I've actually tucked the string for the tassel underneath here. 
right? So you don't see it. Um, I'll give you a sneak peek of one of the things from Friday. Ta-da, it's a treat box. <laughs> and it's big enough to fit a gift card, money, car keys, tickets to a trip. I don't know, whatever you would give some field grad. Um, I got a trip to Hawaii for my high school grad. I never went to Hawaii. I cashed it in. I went later because I was just a poor starving student then, but um, I went to a different place later. I never ended up going to Hawaii, which I wish I had because like I said, 38 years later, and I still haven't been to Hawaii. I have been around the world though. Um, I digress, sorry, squirrel. So this is the thing, and I just left a piece of note paper in here so you could like write on it because it's black on black on black. But that's the same thing here. I made this tassel and then I just put a piece of cardstock over top. So the tassel goes poked through and then you cover it with cardstock because that's the easiest way to, to get the, like the strings so you don't see them. Now, if you don't want them to move or if you don't care if they move or not, like because this one moves, I think it's more fun than it well, that moves. Um, then you could just make a tassel and stick it down. I could have I could have made this like this, right? So it just it just stuck there. And I actually didn't need to put this on here. I just when I had just the hat, it was just a whole lot of orange. Um, so that's why I decided to put something on here. Uh, but I, I like the way that this tassel, you can't quite see it when I hold it, it hangs down this way when the card is open, right? So that's why I wanted it to kind of hang off the edge. So I have poked the string through, put it underneath here, put tear and tape, and then put the, the top on. So depending how you're doing your tassel, you might need to do it before this step. So now that I've, there's your, there's your public service announcement on tassels. <laughs> ah, told you I was knackered. I'm, I'm, I'm hitting the part now where everything's gonna start to be funny because <laughs> ah, tassel lecture. Don't end up in a career that involves wearing tassels. That's where my mind went there in case, just so you're all caught up to my weirdo mind. Okay, so once, once you're ready to put your hat on, this is all you're gonna do. You're gonna put this down. You're gonna hold it because I keep sticking it to everything. Line up the point of your hat on the bottom. Line it, follow it along. And it is just gonna kind of line up to the corners of the card with, like I said, those two corners. There's no, there's no avoidable way around that. The two corners are just gonna kind of stick out. They're like the sneak peek, I guess. Right, and so this is where my hat's gonna go. Now, this is where you, I, I think it's better to put the hat on first, because if you need to do any kind of trimming or fixing, <laughs> you can do it now, but you still want the hat to look good on the outside, right? Because make sure that whatever combination you came up with, it, oops, it still fits in an envelope, right? Make, just make sure you didn't make it so big that you can't fit it in your envelope. So this works, and this is like, Pushed, oops, pushed right against the top. So now I know I can fasten this down. So now I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to put tear and tape on this side too. There's, there's probably, I, I think each person is going to have like their own preference, whatever works for them. I probably do things. Um, I know you're not supposed to swear on the internet. I'm trying to think what, if I can say what. <laughs> Back password is what I was going to say. I'm not sure if I'm allowed to say that on you. Um, so it, it is really, I guess maybe it's just personal preference and whatever works for you. So I'm going to center my card. Center my card. Center this flap on my card. I'm going to make sure it's just above because that's where it worked the last time. And I'm just kind of balancing it there right now. And I'm going to close my card and I'm going to put my little hat down and I'm going to make sure I wasn't wrong. And I'm going to squeeze my card shut. I did, I did that sideways because that was the only way I could make that work. Now I have my card. Now I can stamp on this one and hear it and close it up. And there's my my lovely uh, my lovely grad hat. So I'm going to make another tassel. I'm going to make the cheater. Actually, you know what? I won't. I will show you the right way. So when I made this tassel, just so you know. This was part of the, hey, sports fan. I guess it's just called fan, Baker's Twine. Um, there was a poppy parade in there. No idea where it went. Evening Evergreen and Night of Navy. So this nice solid color, heavy duty twine came out of this package. If I had any idea where the poppy parade was, <clears throat> um, it would probably still work as a tassel, even though this is real red. It probably still would work. 
but in the new catalog, in the new in colors, um, there's one made with sweet sorbet. So I'm getting into Tamara's time. The thing just flashed up on the screen saying she was going live. Okay, so here's how you're gonna make a tassel real quick. I have like 30 seconds. Leave a tail hanging out. We're gonna wrap around about 10 times. The more you wrap, the thicker the tassel. We're gonna end up up at the top. And we are going to, oops, this is supposed to be up here. And then we're gonna wrap around, I don't know, three, four times this way. <laughs> I got that piece in the middle. Trim this one off. So this one's going this direction. So this one comes, oops, this one's going this way. So this one's gonna come this direction. Tie them in a knot. Uh, I get self-conscious every time I put anything in my mouth now, because <clears throat> back in the good old days, you stick something in your mouth and it's no big deal. But now I'm uh, very self-conscious that, you know, somebody's going to not like that because we're all being super cautious. So all we do is tie it around to make that little thing, snip all of these apart. Uh, you might need to like flatten them out because I never cut straight and give yourself a haircut. And then I took this one little piece that was left, poked a hole, stuck it in, and there's my task. Boom, we're done. Uh, sorry for running so late, ladies. That was my uh, tired rambling. I will finish up my cards and post some pictures later tonight, and I will have all the dimensions on my blog on Saturday. Thank you guys very much for joining me. Have a great night, everybody. Bye.